This is Mrs. O'Neill for AP Chemistry, Chapter 11, Section 2, Part 3. These intermolecular forces, but now we're going to talk in more detail about these LD, or London Dispersion Forces. So pause the video, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. And again, always read as you're writing. So the four intermolecular forces, and this one is just going to be on these LD forces. So why are they called LD forces? Because they're temporary dipoles. So like we saw in the last video, you have two nonpolar molecules, and at some point that nonpolar molecule, those electrons might shift. Remember, those molecules, or I should say those atoms in that molecule are sharing those electrons very equally, right? That's why they're nonpolar. They're supposed to be sharing those electrons very equally. However, we all know that as equal as it can be, every once in a while, one of those atoms is going to say, well, I want that electron a little bit more often, so I'm going to hold on to it more. So even in that split second that the more electrons are with one atom versus the other, now there's considered a partial charge, right? Now the charge is not 100% even because it's not 100% equal. Um, uh, sharing those electrons equally. So now one atom has a partially positive and one has a partially negative. So because of that, it's called a temporary dipole or an induced dipole. So this polarizability is going to be a big word in this whole section. Polarizability means the molecule becoming a dipole. How easily is this nonpolar molecule um, going to become a polar molecule? So the larger those atoms are, the size of those atoms, the larger they are, the more easily it's going to be able to be polarizable. So hopefully that makes sense because you have a lot more electrons. If you have a lot more electrons, again, those electrons are moving really, really fast, and those electrons Electrons now can move from one atom to another a little bit more freely because the atom is so big. And those electrons, as the size of the atoms gets bigger, those electrons are farther away from the nucleus, so they can kind of do their own thing. So the larger the atom, the more polarizable it can become. So this is why nonpolar substances really can become solids and they can become liquids. They, they can go from that, they, 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 they can kind of go, you know, uh, fluidly. You you know, a little bit more easily, they become more solids and more liquids. They can, they can be in all different forms. So this is an example. And again, if you want to kind of look at what I'm doing and then draw your example in your notes, um, just to make sure you're understanding how these nonpolar molecules can become pol polar. And then that's what's going to be this London dispersion force. Because at the moment, you have two hydrogen di, uh, di, um, oh my goodness, di, Diatomic molecules. There we go. Sorry about that. So they have no charge whatsoever. So there's not going to be any force of attraction between these two molecules. However, at a slight instant, this hydrogen, one of them is going to grab onto the electrons more than the other, and now it's going to be slightly polar. So how about if the other guy does the same thing? Ah, now you have two uh, molecules, two diatomic molecules who were once nonpolar, now they're polar. Well, now what happens? Now we have what's called an, uh, oops, sorry. Now we have what's called that intermolecular force between the negative and the positive. And these these IMFs, this, this London dispersion, are the weakest because, again, at some point, those polar molecules can now become go back to being nonpolar, their, their original nonpolar state, and again, there's not going to be any force of attraction. So somewhere in your notes, make sure that you're drawing that those two nonpolar molecules. Let me show that one more time. Um, so again, we're starting, starting at two nonpolar, one becomes polar, the other one becomes polar, and now you have that intermolecular force of these London dispersions in between. So pause the video and make sure you get that information down. So again, if you have London dispersion force, I'm sorry, if you have any kind of force, they all, every, every, every substance has London dispersion forces and it is the weakest. So you might want to even write that somewhere in the margins. <clears throat> so because of that, here are some properties of dispersion force um, Molecules, they're weak. Again, they're short-lived because there's a temporary dipole. Um, so again, if it's if it's the lower the temperature, the longer it lasts. So eventually they can become um, uh, liquid. 
Um, again, more electrons is going to be more polarizable. The bigger the molecule, the higher those melting and boiling points are. And of course, it, your strength is going to increase with increasing weight or increasing mass. And again, we want to remember it's the weakest of all of these intermolecular forces, the four that we're going to talk about. So this is a question, can you arrange these in increasing um, uh, order of forces? So to me, they all look uh, like they would be nonpolar. Uh, so you might need to, they, 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 they'll probably have all the same structure, but you never know. Maybe you want to do the structure. Everything is based off of structure. Uh, and then the third thing you might want to look at is the mass. So pause the video and see if you can come up with an arrangement of increasing London uh, forces and why. So again, I did it this way according to mass because I told you that the, the structure would basically all be the same. They're all tetrahedral. Uh, so the bigger the molecule, right, the bigger the molecule, the more the molar mass, um, and that would be the stronger the force. Um, so you could take into consideration all three things there. So more molar mass, uh, more so greater in size or even more electrons uh, would mean that the strength is more. So just as a reminder, this little arrow, uh, remember it's like an alligator. So the small point would be the smaller guy and the opening, the bigger end would be the bigger guy, just so you know which way uh, that is pointing to, because you'll see that a lot in the AP. All right, we will see you in class. Um, again, you should be watching all four uh, videos on the intermolecular forces before we can do the bookwork.